Okay, we don't take a short break. In fact, we have uh, a new IPO opening, the IPO for Uniparts India, the company that operates in the agriculture and construction segment, has opened up for subscription today. The company has set the price band of the offer at 548 to 577 rupees per share. The implied market cap close to around 2600 crore rupees. We have Gurdeep Soni, who is the chairman and managing director of Uniparts, joining in. Uh, Gurdeep, thank you so much for joining in. And uh, good luck for your entry into the stock markets. Uh, the first question, of course, is with regards to the funds that you're raising. It's an entire offer for sale. So obviously, no money is going into the company. What exactly is your annual capex? How do you plan to fund it? Is there any debt on your books? Just wanted to understand going forward, how do you, you know, fund your business needs? Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on your show and uh, giving me an opportunity to talk about my company. Uh, you are correct. This is a OFS uh, completely and uh, primarily because the private equity investors in the company are uh, exiting uh, and, and uh, a small portion is also being exited by uh, the promoters. Uh, the company per se does not need any fresh money. In, in fact, it's a very strong uh, financial company. Uh, just to give you some numbers, you know, the uh, from the sales we had last year of 1,227 crores, uh, our EBITDA was 271 crores, which was at a 22%. Uh, our PAT was uh, uh, 167 crores, which was 14%. But um, And our ROC is uh, 31%, and our ROE is 26.8%. Uh, uh, fact is, uh, you know, I, I normally look at uh, um, three figures, uh, uh, EBITDA 22% company, PAT 14% company, and uh, free cash 7%. So. Uh, after taking care of our capex and working capital requirements, uh, the free cash is still seven percent. In fact, the company has a, a stated policy of a twenty-five percent dividend, uh, subject to approval of the board. And uh, uh, and and in that may use three and a half percent of the free cash, and the balance is still available for uh, acquisitions moving forward. So acquiring more businesses overseas, you know. So the company is very healthy. In fact. In the last uh, three years and three months, the company has generated 424 crores of uh, uh, cash. Uh, debt, which was about uh, four years ago, was 250 crores. Is, is as we speak, is uh, almost about 60 crores. So uh, clearly, uh, a very strong financial for this company, and uh, and, and Uniparts therefore doesn't need any fresh money uh, for its own business. Could you talk about your exports? Because about 47% of your revenues comes in from North America. Europe is about 25%, and everyone's concerned about a global slowdown. Uh, what's the outlook on exports? Uh, very frankly, uh, as you mentioned, the two sectors that we are servicing, the construction machinery and the agricultural machinery sector, uh, on, the, on the agricultural machinery sector, in fact, out of the top 10 companies in the world, all 10 are customers of Uniparts. And on the construction machine, uh, out of the top 10, uh, five uh, uh, are, are, are customers. Specifically looking at the USA market, you know, uh, uh, last year, uh, the US government passed a $1 trillion infrastructure bill. And even though about $600 billion is going to be spent on things like the internet and the railways, but more than $400 billion is being spent on roads, ports, bridges, etc. So a lot of spend happening on the infrastructure side. Uh, again, oil and gas uh, companies are spending a lot of money on their infrastructure because they are so rich and making so much money. And uh, uh, what we are also seeing is uh, that uh, on the agricultural side also, you know, because of uh, uh, the, the war, Ukraine and Russia, uh, um, about 20 million tons of exportable grain from Ukraine went out of the market, and another 20 million from Russia because of embargoes. Um, so clearly the food prices have gone up uh, as well. Uh, in fact, uh, Indian farmers started exporting and then uh, rightfully the government uh, banned exports uh, so that the food inflation doesn't happen in India. But in USA and Europe, uh, the, the farmers have the maximum income they've had in the last five years. And, and really they're looking on spending to replace a lot of their equipment. Uh, uh, the top company in the world in construction, who is my customer, is actually predicting that... Uh, uh, next year, will, they will grow 13 to 15%. And the, they see the peak in this business in only in 2026. Finally, on the agriculture side, again, the top company in the world, which is also my customer, 
they are predicting the peak to be 2025, and they too are looking at uh, 12 to 15 percent growth for next year. So clearly, I would say both these segments are kind of recession proof. Uh, All right. As, as far as that is concerned. Yeah. Uh, Gurdeep, you know the two main segments that you operate in, the three-point linkage system that you have and also the uh, machined parts. Can you take us through the margin that you make on both of these and the split right now? So actually the margins on uh, both of them uh, average are 22% uh, of better that we make. Uh, but uh, it's a split, uh, it's 18% on the agricultural machinery parts, the three-point linkage, and about 25% on the precision machine parts, which are really articulation joints. Uh, which we make for the construction machinery segment. Right. And the other thing that I wanted to know from you is that client concentration is a bit of a risk as well for you. You supply to John Deere, don't you? Uh, yes, sir. How much is that as an overall uh, proportion of your sales? So John Deere uh, last year was 33% uh, of our business. Uh, but the next five customers that we have uh, put together are another average about 5 to 7% each, you know. So that makes uh, 10 customers have over 77% of your revenues. Uh, that is a bit of a risk, ain't it? Uh, to tell you the truth, all these are very large corporations. To tell you the truth, we haven't lost any customer ever. And to tell you the truth, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of customer stickiness. We have a model that is risk-free from uh, the supply chain, which is uh, really one of the bigger concerns because we have warehouses in USA and Europe uh, and we supply to all our major customers through the warehouses. Over 40% of our business is through the warehouses. And the customer stickiness, the fact that we, we, we are actually graded as key partners to most of these customers, uh, we really don't see the risk of them moving away. But even having said that, we are constantly adding more and more business. I may like to tell you that the China plus one that is playing out is also bringing a lot more business to our table. Uh, we are one of the real beneficiaries of the fact that a lot of American and European companies are very, very seriously uh, moving their business out of China and, and coming to companies like Unipaths uh, to, to really uh, buy more and more from here. So you make long-term plans, right? Your top customers on the agriculture as well as on the construction side indicated that things will peak out in 2025, 2026. That's what you indicated. What then? Correct. How are you planning to realign your business or what's going to be the strategy? Uh, truly, uh, you're, you're talking about another four to five yeah. years when this happens. And, and, and you know, the, the world is in a constant flux at the moment. And really, uh, what they had said would peak out uh, in 23, 24 has become 25 and 26 only because of the geopolitical situations that has happened just over the last uh, six months, you know. So, uh, but clearly, uh, there's a lot of demand. In fact, uh, both these customers that you talk about uh, in, in the recent commentary that they have given, um, uh, they are saying that inventories at the dealerships are practically zero and that even today for most of the machines they make, there's a wait list of three to six months. So clearly they are seeing a very robust uh, a few years moving forward, you know. You know, quickly before we let you go, uh, Gurdiv, if you could tell us, over the last few years you've been growing uh, your revenue at 16 odd percent. Your EBITDA has actually grown much faster. 22 percent is the margins uh, that you've reported. Uh, is this a sustainable level? What kind of growth can we foresee in terms of margins going forward? And at what point would you so, want to, uh, you know, deploy some capex? Absolutely. In fact, uh, 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 very frankly, the last six years, the top line has grown 12.1% uh, CAGR. Uh, and, and you're right, the EBITDA has grown 30% CAGR in this period, and the PAT has grown 40% CAGR. And, and like I said, we are a very cash-rich company, and uh, uh, on the flip side, our, our spend on CapEx is very low. It's only 3% of our top line. So we are planning to do uh, a, a, a CapEx of 45 crores this year. Uh, what happens is that uh, our depreciation is about 40 crores and uh, about 50% of the depreciation we use as replacement CapEx, which really adds another 5 to 7% capacity. Uh, and then for every $1 of new business that we get, uh, 16 cents is a spend on uh, machinery. Our, our capex is also low because uh, we don't. This does not include land and building. And, and we actually are um, uh, even the sixth factory that we are setting up in India. We've already taken it on rent and on lease. And 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 this sixth factory will be enough for the capacity required for the next two years uh, moving forward for us. 
All right, uh, Gurdeep, we got it. Thank you very much for joining us. We will leave it at that today. And, uh, you know, when the company lists, we hope to get a little bit more details from you in terms of, you know, what the business's growth could look like going forward. It's time for a short break, but there's lots more market action when we come back.